So today I want to uh, talk to you about the graph using point and slope. What it means is there will be a point given and there is a slope given. Last time when we talked about slope, you know, it's basically it's a new way for you to find the rate of change of your line. And because of that, it opens new doors. It allows you to use a point and be able to use a slope to, to get to that second point. Remember, when we want to graph a line, we need to have a minimum of two points. Now, with the slope already uh, defined, we can actually use it and be able to just use one point to graph our line. So I'm just going to do a, a quick review here. Notice that uh, I have two points. Okay, This point right here is negative 3, 1. just going to go ahead and show it to you. Negative 3, 1. And this is 1, 2. If I'm going to connect these two lines, this is what you see. Okay, that's, I'm just going to kind of extend it to show you what it looks like. Let's quickly find a slope using that two points, shall we? So the way that we find a slope, depending on how you want to take it, using the formula if you want to, which is x2, you know, x1, define x2, x1, y2, y1, and use your um, slope to solve it, or you can set it up as a subtraction problem the, the way that I show you. So negative 3, 1, subtract 1, 2. You subtract it correctly. Remember, you can set it up as two columns. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So that means my slope is defined as negative 1 over negative 4, or simplified to 1 fourth positive which just makes sense because the line goes up, the positive, and you know, the slope has to be positive. Now, how does that tie into what we're doing here? If you notice that between these two points, the rate of change is one-fourth. That means this is your rise and this is your run. Okay. If you start from any point whatsoever, I mean, let's just check that. We're just simply going from left to right. Start with this point. You want to get to this point, and using the slope, it's we are to rise over run. So rise up one, run four. Guess what? We will end up landing on the second point. And if you use a slope, you will always, always land on that same exact line on a different point. Okay. So what it shows you is you can certainly use the same slope to get to other points on that same exact line. Okay, so that's why it's so useful to have a slope, because with any given point and any given slope, you can certainly use that point as a base point to get to any other points on the line. Okay, using the slope, and as long as we have two points, we can certainly make a line. So let me just show you something that's actually clearer here. So imagine I have this point for you, negative 4, 5, and the slope of, here's my slope, of 1 half. Okay, how would you graph that? Well, you can certainly start plotting the first point, negative 4 and 5. Okay, negative 4, 5, so negative 4 left and 5 up. So here's my first point. Since my slope is positive, I expect my second point, you know, as I move to the right-hand side to go upward, right? So th this is rise overrun so that it tells me to go up one and then it's positive so I'm going to go right two so I'm going to go up one and I'm going to go two to the right so one two is right here and that's good when it's going to hit the second point if again to get to my third point I do the same exact action I go up one and go over two and you know when you connect these three points you will have yourself a line using the slope and a point Okay, vice versa, don't forget, you don't have to always go to the right-hand side. The slope can also be written as negative 1 over negative 2. Technically, it is still a positive slope. However, using this, you can instead go backwards. So it's going to be 1 down, right, because it's negative 1 down and 2 to the left. And guess what? If you go 1 down and 2 to the left, you will also land on that same exact line. So what, it, what I'm trying to show you here is that it doesn't matter where you go, if you're using the same slope, you will be able to land on different points on the same line. Okay? So now, what I give you a slope that looks like this. Here's a point. Let's start with the point of 1, 2. 
and a slope of negative 3. What does that mean when a slope is not written in fraction form? It means that you can actually write it as a fraction. You can write it as negative 3 over 1 or 3 over negative 1. Notice it's still a negative 3, so it doesn't matter which one you take. Stick with one if you have to. So now you always first plot the, the point okay, before you use your slope to get to the second point. So 1, 2 up. So here's my first point. This is like my base point. I'm going to use this point to get to my second. And how I'm going to use it, it's up to you. You want to use this slope. It's going to be negative 3 over 1. That means it's going to be um, down 3 because, remember, it's rise over run. So down 3, 1 over to the right-hand side. So let's take a look. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 down. So 3 down, 1 over to the right-hand side. So there it is. I connect these, and that will be my line, and it reflects what I have as a negative slope. The line goes down. I want you to see that, you know, the, the steeper it, it is, the more negative the number is. Vice versa, you know, if you have a very big positive number, the steeper, you know, the, it goes up. So you can kind of see the difference right away. Now, That's what I want to show you. So, if here's another example, just make sure that we understand what's going on here. Let's say I want you to cross this point three seven and the slope is undefined. How about that? Or no slope. So how are you going to graph that? Well, we know that whenever a slope is undefined, we expect to see what kind of line? A vertical line. Okay. And so we always want to plot that first point. We go 3 over and 7 up. There it is. And since we know for sure this is a vertical line because the slope is undefined, I can just draw a line straight through. And that's how we graph that line. Okay, so just try to practice. Um, any questions, feel free to ask. But these are the five problems that I want you to work on before you come back to class tomorrow. Here is, this is on the worksheet. So do number three. I want you to do number 16. I want you to work on number 22. Work on number 27. And number 28. Okay, so let's try these five before you come back the next day.